Hello, fellow Blue Crusaders, and one for our latest episode of the Weekly Crusaders. My name is Sean Wasserkrug, and with me, as always, is Brian Michaels. And today, we're talking about two movies that came out during the week of September 3rd through September 9th. Uh, we are, I wouldn't say we're in the horror Halloween season yet, but we are talking about two horror films. Uh, these are two films that we talked about last year during our Halloween special, which for everyone who hadn't seen it, don't worry. I'm going to redrop that show here at the end of the month so you guys can basically re-watch those movies. Or if you guys missed it, you can watch those movies again coming up this year instead of us coming up with a whole new list. Maybe we'll do that next year. Um, but, uh, yeah, we, we had a Halloween special last year where we picked a we each picked a movie a day for you guys to choose from based off of a topic. Try to pick movies that weren't like your – Freddy Krueger, Jason movies. We try to pick like niche films, yeah, films picks. that were underrated kind of things. Uh, mine, mine's more. I get. I would call mine more mainstream because it was it released in theaters and it was number one its opening weekend. But for its genre, there's like a thousand of these. And Brian definitely picked a movie that I had never heard of. But once I watched, I was like, oh my god, I like a lot of these people in this movie. So <laughs> it's one of those like sneak film, kind of like a good old fork fashion orgy last week, where it's like so many. There's there's a lot of people I like in the cast here. Um, and I actually have a lot of fun with it. So we are going to start with Brian's pick. Um, this is a movie, like I said, <coughs> never even knew this movie existed until last year when Brian brought it to my attention. I think it was your pick for a vampire movie, was it not? I think so. It's picked for something. I don't. Yeah, it was. It was picked for something, but I'm pretty sure it was. It was a vamp. It was for vampire movies based off of what the movie is. But we were talking about the 2015 film Blood Sucking Bastards. Now, this movie was. Ne not necessarily released uh, in theaters, so I don't have anything for the budget. Obviously, no weekend opening, no box office at all for this movie, so it's a pretty bare bone uh, breakdown of it, uh, except for like what were the top five movies this that weekend, which honestly was a pretty shitty weekend. They probably could have broke top five. It was a pretty shitty week, so they probably should have just released it in theaters. Um, but Brian, I'm gonna let you take it away because this is your movie. Uh, go ahead and start talking about Blood Sucking Bastards. Yeah, so Blood Sucking Bastards is a uh, vampire movie. It came out in 2015. Uh, it did all the film festivals, things like that, but then essentially went straight to video after that. It supposedly had a limited release, but it must have been so tiny they didn't even bother reporting numbers for it. Uh, so essentially, it's a straight to video movie. Um, this stars uh, Fran Kranz, who most people know from Cabin in the Woods, maybe Dollhouse, a couple other things. Um, Joey Kern, who uh, is a, actually very funny in this movie. Uh, he's somebody who like never really took off, but you recognize the face. He's shown up in things like Super Troopers and things like that. Wasn't he in Cab Cabin Fever? I think he was also in Cabin Fever, yes. I yeah. he was in Cabin That's where I remember him from. Obviously, the whole Cabin somewhere. theme going on here. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, Pedro Pascal is in this. Um, I did not the... know he was in this. And when he popped up, yeah. I was like, oh, Pedro! This is this is kind of in that period before when Pedro Pascal was kind of like that person, like I know that face, but he wasn't really a known name yet. Yeah, uh, was, he plays it was basically the Game of Thrones, wasn't it? Or was it right uh, around Game of Thrones? Right around the same time. Yeah, yeah. Um, they're really the only known names. There's uh, Matthew Lillard shows up in a brief cameo. Uh, Joel Murray, who's Bill Murray's like half brother, you recognize that face too. He's the boss at this place. Uh, basically, it's about this business. Like it's it's a very much I describe this thing as office space with vampires. Um, I would say it's, it's like workaholics. Workaholics is another good. Yeah, it's, it's very much like a workplace comedy. Show now. <laughs> yeah, it's a workplace comedy. You know, there's a, a couple of buddies that work there. They kind of joke around all day. Uh, one of them is hoping to get this promotion. That that's Frank Kranz. Um, but the boss brings in this new new person to be the head head sales manager, whatever it is. Yeah, um, sales manager. Which is the job that Frank Kranz was was thinking he was going to get. And uh, this is Pedro Pascal. And mm -hmm. as this person shows up, I'll. Sudden, people start mysteriously disappearing and dying, but then showing up again. And that turns out he's a vampire. They're turning everyone to vampires, and horror and blood and wackiness ensues. Um, it's very much a horror comedy. Um, I think it's a very good balance, actually, of horror and comedy. I, I'd say it leans more into the comedy, although it is super bloody, and I like that. I like when movies aren't afraid to get bloody. I don't want this PG 13 horror crap. Um, yeah, I don't have a whole lot specifically to say about this movie. I will say, Frank Kranz is somebody who I actually kind of thought we'd see more of after Cabin in the Woods. And like I said, he does pop up in a couple of things, but he started doing like, you know, he did a couple of dramas and things like that. But the movies he does do tend to go straight to video. But I like him in this. If you liked him in Cabin in the Woods, if you liked him in things like Much Ado About Nothing, you'll like him in this. Um, the rest of the cast, equally impressive actually the, the ones i thought were the funniest were the ones that I, I don't even really recognize their names or faces from much else 
Um, yeah, I, I don't have a lot specific to say about this thing. Uh, what were your thoughts on it? Um, yeah, like uh, with um, uh, Franz Kras, he's definitely one of those actors that, like, you, yeah, you thought he was going to be something a lot bigger. Because, I mean, he's, he's solid. You know, I like him and everything he's in. He's one of those guys that's, like, you almost have to, like, warm up to him for, like, the first, like, 15 minutes. And then you start to actually endear him as a character. Like, same thing with, like, Cabin in the Woods and, mm -hmm. and everything. Because he's just kind of, I don't know. I don't know if it's his face or just his demeanor. It's, like, you always have to warm up to him and everything I watch him in. Uh, but he's he's always a solid, you know, co-lead. This I think, the first – because he was definitely – he was not the lead in Cabin in the Woods. But he's definitely the lead in this. Um, but I liked him in the in the film overall, and then uh, the rest of the cast. I will say for this, um, it took a little bit to get going. I think it took about twenty minutes for me to I, not necessarily because I didn't like it. It was just because it took me a little bit to kind of get used to the characters and just kind of figure out like, okay, what am I walking into? Because once again, I went in this movie pretty much you know in the dark. I mean, I knew what it was because you had me watch the trailer before, but I didn't know if it was like like an office space, office kind of comedy. It's actually more like workaholics, personally. Um, and just kind of how it was going. I wasn't necessarily, like, attaching myself to the characters just because their characters seemed very one-note. It wasn't until about halfway through when they actually started to die off that I was like, okay, now I'm actually liking these characters. Oh, and they're dead, you know, kind of thing. Um, Joe, Joe, Joey Kern, I, I like him. He's just a funny dude. And, uh, I actually liked Emma Fitzpatrick who plays Amanda or Mandy. The whole movie, I'm like, where do I know her from? Yeah. Nowhere. She just looks familiar to everybody. Uh, she's got one of those faces. Uh, but I also, I also actually, uh, Justin Ware. I actually really like Justin Ware in this. Took me a little bit to get used to him. But then once he was in it, I was like, I actually am really enjoying this guy. And also Pedro. I love villain pedro pascal i love where he just when he just kind of lets go and just embraces it because like in the third act when they finally just you know stop oh yeah we're vampires everything after that pedro's gold like his like like aren't we killing a lot of you guys uh i mean this is this is part of the business like i i'm gonna call it legal <laughs> so like just the lines he was dropping there i was like i love this kind of version of pedro where he's just like acting nonchalant but like still a bad guy but it's like god damn why is he so fun he's such a fun character and i kind of wish we would have gotten more of him in the movie but i get you know it's it, you know it's a tight you know like 90 minute film so you're obviously are building up around the main characters he's you know the mysterious you know villain i mean they give him a little bit of a backstory but i just kind of wanted one or two more fun scenes with pedro because i liked him so much in the in the film uh I also really, really enjoyed. Oh, I'm gonna find. I want to find his name real quick. Um, I think it's Marshall Givens who plays the security guard Frank. Oh yeah. Uh, I really enjoyed that guy. I I was I was actually really happy that he became a bigger character as the movie went on. Um, he reminded I, me of. I, I just recently rewatched. Um, um, oh, what is it called? The Belko Experiment. And they had a very similar character in that, like the security guard that was like. You know, I've actually never seen the Belco experiment, so I I, I I can't really attach myself to that. <laughs> but but when but when I saw the trailer for this, my brain went to the Belco experiment because I saw the trailer for it. I was like, this is very much mm -hmm. like a comedy version of the Belco experiment, but with, you know, vampires. But I really liked his character. Um, I I liked the aspect of what they were trying to do. Um, sometimes it wasn't uh, utilized to its fullest potential. But I had fun when they actually finally got into the, the actual vampireness of it all and really kind of just bought it. Like, I liked how how when the vampires died, they basically, you know, blood splatter explosion. I thought that was fun. Um, but what, no, and I maybe I missed it, but there were certain characters that turned into vampires. And we never saw what happened to them. Like, this was it the secretary girl who had a thing for, um, for, uh, I'm blanking on uh, France's character name. But she was like hooking up Evan. in she was like hooking what's that? Evan. Evan. Like she was hooking up with uh his buddy and she turned him, and then we never saw her again. Like I don't recall seeing her die in the in the office when they were all fighting. Like she just disappeared. I don't recall. Yeah, she she hooks up and turns him, and then you she, she's not in the movie anymore after that. 
which kind of bummed me out because I actually was really liking her character throughout the film. And well, then, for like, a while, they were just like, there was a segment they were just like killing all the vampires. Yeah, so but it's just like you can't you see them screen time and character time, and then you don't ever see them again. You're just like, what the what the hell happened to them? And then, like, even Frank at the end of the movie, like, you see him battling, and you assume this thing, and then at the end, like, oh yeah, you know, line of duty, and it's like we didn't even we didn't even see him die. We didn't see him die. Is he a vampire or is he dead? Like, we don't know. Like, they just didn't show it, which kind of pissed me off because I, I like the Frank character. We never really got an end game with Frank. But in, in what we got on screen, I enjoyed most of it. I think they could have utilized it a little bit better. Uh, but what we did get, I, I didn't hate the movie. I mean, it definitely feels it has that, like, straight to – like DVD straight to yeah. You know, th- this was yeah. never going to make any money theatrically, and and but it's just one of those things where it's like I, I've waited through so much crap that's gone straight to video that mm-hmm. when I come across one like this, I'm like oh, this is actually entertaining. It's like it stands out a little bit more to me. So, I, and like yeah, you said, it's, it's a nice. It's 84 minutes total, and it's including credits. So yeah, it's one of those where, and normally I say this for like big big budget films because they're trying to you know pack so much story. This is one movie that probably could have used about 20 more minutes just to breathe to allow for some more comedy, allow some more vampire action and stuff like that, allow for the characters to kind of breathe a little bit outside of like, you know, you know, the main two leads in the film. Um, I also, but I mean, I, I probably would have been okay with at least another 10 to 20 minutes of, of this, just so that way they, we could have gotten a little, a little bit more. Cause it was just like, Oh, boom, we're done. And we we're going home. Bye. And that movie's over. I'm just like, we could have, we could have went I'm guessing that was that. largely budgetary because, like you said, the first Probably. half before the vampires show up is like it's it's much slow. I mean, that's where most a lot of the comedy is. It's still fun in the first half, but it does take a while to get going. But like once the vampire kicks in, that's when the movie kicks in. The problem is that's when it gets more more expensive too. Also, so. got so excited when I saw Matthew Lillard, and <laughs> he was just gone. I I have to think that like he knew the director or one of the actors and came and did it like a favor or something. Yeah, it's not a role probably. big enough for him to bother doing. I got so excited. I was like, oh, Matthew Lillard. Oh, if he turns into a vampire, that'd be awesome. And it's like, oh, nope, we're leaving. Bye. Okay. I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> it's like, don't tease me with that and then not give me anything yeah. for it. But uh, but yeah, I, it was it was fine. It was fine for what it was. I didn't hate it. It's not something I would necessarily say, oh, you guys have to watch this. But I mean, I didn't. I I wasn't like at the end of the movie going, man, I wasted an hour and a half of my time. I mean, it was, it was decent for what it was. I think we could have gotten a little more out of it. But yeah, I'll take it. Anything else you'd like to add? Uh, no, this one is available to watch like everywhere streaming. Yeah. So all the ones with the ads, at least. Yeah, I pretty yeah I pretty much had had like you know the pick of the litter. I was like, <laughs> which yeah, ones? Tubi, Roku, uh, Shout Factory, Pluto TV, Freebie, Plex, whatever. Roku channel, all that kind of stuff. Yeah. I think I watched it on Tubi, and I think it only. Ha- I think it, it, it. That's what I like about well, Tubi. Tubi's like, one of the better ones in terms of ads. Yeah. Well, yeah, because you can because it does like three ads, but then like in the last forty minutes, they'll be like, "All right, we're we're not doing that to you anymore. You're you're in the thick of the movie. We're we're not going to interrupt you anymore." Which I'm like, I like that. Thank you for not doing that. <laughs> um, <laughs> next we're going to go to my film. <laughs> now, like I said on last week's episode. I have no idea how what Brian thought of this movie. I this is probably one of my favorite horror films, uh, and I'll explain why. Um, I champion this movie so damn much to anyone who asks. Uh, I fully expect Brian not to like this nearly as much. I expect to maybe even have to defend this movie to Brian. I might, I might not. I hope I don't, but I really, really hope that he enjoyed it at least somewhat. Uh, but I am talking about, in my opinion the best exorcism movie ever made the exorcism of emily rose which came out in 2005 september 9 2005 to be exact had a budget of 19 million dollars had a weekend opening of 30.05 million it was number one its own opening week it's only week at the number one spot and had a finished box office of 145.17 million 75.07 million domestic and 70.09 million international um exorcism movies if you've seen one, you probably have seen them all. Everyone basically just tries to do a little bit of The Exorcist, tries to add a little bit new to it. and But at the end of the day, a lot of it is, is a kid or a woman strapped to a bed with a bunch of rabbis just yelling at them, pointing the cross at them. You've seen it once. You've seen it 18,000 yeah, fucking it's, times. It's never men. I just realized that. What's that? It's never men. It's women and children. 
Yeah, well, no, I mean, well, Pope's Exorcist started off with a man uh, earlier this year. It started off with a man, then he transferred it to the pig, and then shot the pig. Right. And, right. But yeah, it's usually women and children. Um, but the I guess, and I've said this before on other films, not necessarily exorcism movies. You, you, yes, it's very hard to create something original, something new, something that we get the same kind of tropes and storylines, whether it's a body switching movie or a Groundhog Day kind of film. But it's what you do with it and how you can make it different than the rest that will make a film either memorable or at least say, hey, you guys went out and you tried something new. I respect that. It might not have worked, but you at least tried. And with The Exorcism of Emily Rose, I felt like they did that. Um, and Brian and I are both in agreement, and you guys can get pissed off as always want. The Exorcist is overrated as fuck. Brian, agree? Yeah. Absolutely. It's overrated yeah. as fuck. I get so annoyed when horror movies have trailers and they go, the scariest movie since The Exorcist. I'm like, so it's not scary? Because The Exorcist is not scary to me. It's <laughs> it's not. I wasn't scary when I was five. It's not scary now, 30-some years later. It's just not a scary film. I'm not saying it's a shit movie, but it's not the great, one of the greatest fucking horror films of all time. The Exorcist of Emily Rose, which is loosely based on a true story of uh, Annalise Michelle. I think I'm saying that right which was an exorcism that happened in like the 1975, 1976. Uh, why I love this movie is that to me, it's not just a horror exorcism film. This is a courtroom drama built around a horror film. And like I said, take something that we've seen a thousand times before, do something different. And the most, the bulk of this movie is that the exorcism stuff has already happened. It's done. It's gone. This is the this is the court. This is the trial of the priest about the events of the exorcism. And it feels very much like a courtroom drama with horror aesthetics. And and I loved that approach. I love this cast. Jennifer Carpenter is fucking amazing in this movie. Now, many people know her as Deborah from Dexter, which she was great on that show until the later seasons when they completely ruined her character. But Jennifer Carpenter puts on, in my opinion, probably one of the best uh, exorcism performances I've ever seen on film. The, and 90% and of this movie, she is doing all the contortionist shit on her own. It's not no body double or anything like that. She is killing this. Some people might say she's overacting, but you know what? It's a fucking exorcism movie. That's you have to kind of overact, but she's crushing this role. Tom Wilkinson, I thought is great in this movie. Laura Linney is great in this movie. Um, I love how they did almost everything in this film. Uh, and I'll touch on it a little bit more later, but I want to go over to Brian. Cause like I said, this was the first time Brian's ever seen this. I very, very rarely get Brian to watch something that he's never seen. And nine times out of 10, it's something he didn't like. So I'm fully prepared to have to defend this movie against him. But I'm going to head over to Brian. Uh, Brian, what were your thoughts? It was your first time seeing it. So I hadn't watched this movie because, like you said, there's for every good exorcism movie, there's 30 bad ones. It's the equivalent of shark movies, basically. There's just so many of them, and they're all kind of the same. And so I've never really watched this one. And then, like, you started talking about it and talking how how this one's really good and you should check it out. And so, like, last Halloween, I meant to check it out. Didn't get around to it. And so I thought, yeah, okay, I will. And then we just, we looked through the calendar and like, you know what? I'll wait and I'll watch it because I know Sean wants to pick this for the show. Yeah. Um, it helps also that has Scott Derrickson who, you know, I don't love all of his stuff, but I do love some of his things. And it's like, it's at least a named director. So I know it's probably in good hands and I watched this movie. Um, eh, it was okay. Um, it, the performances across the board. We're great. Laura Linney, Tom Wilkinson, everybody did great. And Jennifer Carpenter does an amazing job at when she's doing the, the possession scenes. Yeah. I thought she did. I thought that was, you're right. That was great. Love that part. Um, Kind of the good and the bad part of this movie for me was that, yes, they tried to do something different with it. And they did this, like this courtroom drama about it. But at the same time, like, I don't care at all about this courtroom drama. It's like, a, it's like the movie was more about, you know, did this really happen? Was it really an exorcism? Was it really a possession? And it's like, I... Every time I went to the courtroom drama, I'm just like, I don't care. Can we get back to more of the possession scenes or something? I, I, I it's. But it's how? Like, the, but like I said though, in the beginning of, the, of of this, if we're just gonna get the same old extra scene, it's just gonna be the same thing. Them on the bed, pointing the cross, blah blah blah, blah her doing shit. But like, you have Jennifer Carpenter's great performance, and it, it could elevate it, and it could be good because, like I said, the exorcism scenes were actually pretty good. 
Um, but yeah, but like I said, I do respect them for trying something different. I just didn't love what they did with it. Um, I just think that every time they went to that, it just kind of the, the movie for me kind of screeched to a halt until we got back to the other stuff. And then the fact that the whole, the whole thing is the court case is kind of negating, did this stuff even really happen? You're kind of like, well, that little bit takes away from it, even though we're seeing it. Are we seeing it from just like, you know, Tom Wilkins' point of view or whatever, and, and not from what, not necessarily what really happened? So we, we don't know. Well, you also had the family there testifying for yeah. uh, Wilkinson as well. So, I mean, they were there and then they had a, didn't they, I can't remember, didn't they have a cop there as well? So there, like it, was, it was the barn scene. They had like a, a third person there that was not family or someone as, as like a witness. So I was like, they had all these witnesses and these people there. Mm-hmm. And, and shit but i mean i yeah i can continue i'm not gonna keep it around. yeah but, then, but of course the prosecution's trying to say you know it was it had to do more with the with her uh, uh, epilepsy and things like that and the speaking Jeez, with tongues could awesome. have been the contracting of the, of the vocal cords and they're, they're trying to rationalize everything and how it could have happened and not been a demon possession um like i said this is not a movie i disliked i, I i've seen many 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 worse exorcism movies it's just it didn't stand out a whole lot for me beyond like i said some of those performances in it um i i, I wonder if also part of it is just you would talk this up so high i know i that know I, i'm not saying now i didn't dislike it but it's like i thought oh this is actually gonna be really good and it's like it was okay it's okay so it, it's that, kind of probably the same thing with blood second bastards is that you were like this is gonna be this is it's a great movie i love it i was like it's fine yeah so it's kind of a double-edged sword it's like you want to tell somebody it's really good but then what are you setting them up for disappointment you know yeah. so, so that's where it's at um yeah i don't know and, and then i i will say i did like the ending now i don't know how i don't know how true this story is to the real life story because that was is in germany right yeah it was in germany um and I don't know if this is like it's not the telling of the story is more like they, 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 mo- they modernized it. They made it American. Yeah. Obviously, not the same character as Emily Rose is obviously not the, the name of, of the woman who was, um, you know, yeah, that's well, stuff like that. I don't even think the same uh, reverend or father as well. well like so. the ending and the result of the trial. I thought I thought that was I like the way they kind of played that. Yeah. And so the ending was kind of like realistic, but satisfying at the same time, mm-hmm. you know, because it, it, they could play a lot of ways where it would have been either there's no way they would find you know, this verdict versus, you know, the downer ending. So they managed to kind of walk that line. I thought that worked really well. Um, but yeah, I, I don't, I don't regret watching this movie, uh, especially because like I said, it's Jeff, Jennifer Carpenter is just every bit as good as you said. Um, it was just, okay. Yeah. One, one of the things I, well, two of the things that I, that I loved about this because it's a, it's based on a true story is that there are, two, there's a few <laughs> in this film uh, was with, with different characters and stuff like that, where they see something that terrifies them, but we never see what they see. Why? Because this is a true story. We never saw what they saw, and because those characters died. There's one particular character that sees something, gets terrified, and run like tries to run. He gets hit by a car. We never saw what he saw. Why? Because you can't fucking ask him because he's dead. You know, it, 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 I love that they did that approach to it because it's like we if you if you if you had him look terrified and you saw what he was looking at, but then he dies like this is based on a true story. Technically, how do you know what he saw? He didn't tell anyone what he saw. He died seconds later. You know, I love that they did that approach to it because on more uh, like any of those other horror films where it's like based on a true story, but they will they would have shown you, oh, it's this big girl, monster. It's like, no, you don't know what that person saw. So you can't just make up what it is because then it takes the the realism of it out of them. And I loved they did that approach to it. I also loved um, eat like every night when Laura Linney would like wake up at like three a.m. and you had that like is she now being fucked with because she's a part of this trial? Like mm-hmm. is is the demons basically making sure that she does not win yeah, is that happening or just like you know or she's just, getting freaked out like after you watch a yeah. horror movie and you start watching all the corners you know exactly that? is it is it in her head i love that's that's what i loved about how they did the 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 real life courtroom stuff is that because of all the stuff she's reading it she's listening to the audio tapes of this is it something re- legitimately happening to her or is it just in her head but the time of the night you know 3 a.m which is you know the witching hour and all this kind of stuff I like I said, it's the aesthetics of how this film is done and how it's shot and how they do certain things to make it feel more real because it's based on a true story, technically. 
um, compared to it, them trying to just make this a over-the-top bombastic horror exorcism film. That's what I appreciate about this movie. That's what I love about this movie. Now, when they do the actual exorcism scenes, yes, they go full-fledged out. Like, I love that scene um, because, like I like said, Jennifer Carpenter is fucking amazing in this film. Is when she's in her dorm room. And she's was this like, before Dexter? I don't know when that came out. This was... It was before quarantine. I know that. It was definitely before quarantine. Uh, I think Dexter was going on. Actually, no, this was a year before Dexter. Okay. Dexter, this so was this pretty much our introduction to her, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, no, she was in White Chicks. I've never. She was one of the friends in White Chicks, but, but yes, this was this was basically her introduction because Dexter was a year later. But like that scene where she's like catatonic, like frozen catatonic, like on the floor. Mm. Like I'm sorry, that is horrifying. Like if you woke up and saw that, like. And then she just starts screaming bloody murder at you. Like, and then like the part where she's like jumping him down and banging her knees, like Carpenter fucking goes full, full out in this. And I respect the hell out of her as an actress for just doing everything in this movie. Um, and I actually did appreciate that end point, that end part of her character where she's like, it's obviously her in her head. I mean, she's walking through, you know, the, the fog and she's like talking to who we're presumably, you know, knowing who she's talking to in there. And just like, you know, what do you what do you want me to do? Like, what should I do? And stuff like that. Like, you give this, you got this peace of mind for the character. Because we already know the outcome of what happened to her because he's on fucking trial. You know, so it's one of those things where it's like, is this going to be a really heartbreaking story? Or are we going to get something of, of a, not necessarily a happy ending, but like a peaceful ending to what this, this girl who really has done nothing wrong had to go through? And, and all this kind of stuff. And I think Carpenter acts the shit out of this. And like I said, Wilkinson's great. And Laura Linney is usually great in everything. She's great in this. And I thought the courtroom stuff, like I said, I liked that ability of them trying to find ways and find reasons that this isn't real. Like I, I liked that aesthetic because once again, it's based on a true story. You're going to have the non-believers and you're going to have the believers. And I liked that they were able to figure out things like, oh, it's because she has this and that's why this happened. And you know, it's not because of an exorcism, but then you have this this peace of mind, the stigma, the audio tapes, and all this kind of stuff. I, not that I would ever really want to be on jury duty because it, would, it sounds like it's fucking awful, but I would have been interested as shit to have been on this this jury. Uh, I thought the courtroom stuff. I love a good courtroom movie if it's well done. You know, whether it's Few Good Men, Twelve Angry Men, uh, Time to Kill, you know, Lincoln Lawyer, you name any of those. I love that we got a courtroom film that was also a horror movie and it was literally a battle or discussion on whether or not this shit was real or a hoax of a, a father basically going off off the rails and, and trying to push a narrative for a very sick girl and this is what happened. I loved how they portrayed that. And I love that the the uh, the prosecutor, he wasn't an asshole. You know, it, was, it wasn't like because more you get those corners, you got like, oh, the, the the other lawyers like this huge prick and, and stuff like that. I like that him and Laura Linney had respect for one another. It wasn't like a I'm an asshole and I'm going to beat you because you're a woman. And uh, it's like it's like, look, it's like this is what's going on. Like, I'm, I'm sorry. I, I can't I can't buy this, but I'm going to fucking try to win this, you know, and I'm going to do the best thing I can. Like, I love that it was a respectable thing with that. And I love that these two movies are two different kinds of films and they were able to meld them together. And I thought it worked perfectly and that's why it's one of my favorite horror films out there if i even want to call it a horror film because like it is horror but i love it as a court drama it's kind of like horror. wasn't conjuring like that too it was a courtroom drama uh, the, the third con no the third conjuring movie which is stupid uh became, i thought it was the most watchable of the three honestly i'm not impressed no, with the first it, was, it was fucking awful <laughs> it, that was it was not much of a courtroom thing at all it was more her going into the woods like it's a law and order S you know svu fucking episode and shit it had nothing to do with the fucking court case which is what i thought we were going to get that's why i was so excited for conjuring because i was like oh it's about this guy like we know this case I was like, oh it's got to be about the court like just like exes of emily rose no it fucking wasn't it was another one of those trailers that promised you this <laughs> and it didn't fucking give it to you i oh i was so disappointed in the third conjuring like yeah yeah not to mention the whole fucking hospital prison hospital scene with like all these people seeing him floating in the air but yet none of them none of them you know went to court about that fuck off like seriously um but yeah i uh i said i love this movie uh brian thought it was fine which i'll, I'll take fine for brian That's what we're both take, today. <laughs> i will take fine from him because i fully expected him to go 
this movie's not as good as you think it is, Sean. It's 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 just like every other exorcist movie, which it isn't. And you you acknowledge that. Like I said, you respect them trying to do something different with it. Uh, I think it works immensely. It, it wasn't your cup of tea, but it was definitely better than probably like 90% of the freaking exorcism movies out there. I, I'll give you this. Better or worse than The Exorcist? Better. Thank you. That's all I needed to hear. That's a win. I'll take that. That's like that's like you with the uh, fucking, um, not Bugsy. Stallone movie that I love that you, uh, that you were, you were afraid of me to watch and I ended up loving. Oscar? Oscar. I want to say Bugsy. That's not, yeah, it was like, it was like, you know, me being like, I liked it. And you're like, yes, I'll take that you think, yes, I will take that you think Exorcism Only Rose is better than The Exorcist. And I, that, that's all I needed from you. That's all I needed. So I will take the win on that. Granted, um, we both anything that's a low bar, that. so we'll see. It's, it's, it's not that it's, the Exorcist I'm not, I'm not saying this one's that low. I'm just saying Exorcist for us is kind of... Eh. Yeah, no, The Exorcist is a fine horror film. It's not one of the all-time classic blah, 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 blah that everyone chalks out to be. Even though I am relatively excited to check out the new one that comes out here this fall because I thought the trailer actually looked relatively solid. Um, But yeah, uh, is this on anything? Because I had this on... I own this. I actually had it on my Voodoo as well. It is not currently free anywhere. But Halloween's coming up, so maybe it will be. I, I would be shocked if it wasn't available like on Peacock or Shutter or somewhere here in the next yeah, few what, weeks. what studio is this? Uh, it's not, it wasn't a major studio, so it could show up anywhere, yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, we hope you guys enjoyed this very quick episode of the Weekly Crusaders. If you guys did, go hit that like, share, and subscribe to the channel so you guys stay up to date with all the latest videos pop up on the Movie Crusaders. Of course, you can follow us on all the social media outs you see below. Out right now is Brian and I's fall movie preview where we talk about all the movies that are coming out for the rest of the year, as well as review the end of summer movies where we just go over what we thought about the summer uh, season in general, as well as our horrible box office summer predictions where we were way, way the fuck off on how things played out, a.k.a. Barbie was not in our top 10 for either one of us. Um, but there are some, while we talked about it, there's not a lot of big films coming out this year because of the strike. There are some gems out there. And sure enough, like every year with Brian and I, we drop that video and then we get trailers for like 18 of the fucking films that we had no <laughs> idea about uh, when we shot the video. And there are some doozies coming out that we were actually excited for that we briefly talked about in the episode but didn't really have enough to go off of. Should have just shot it a week later. We would have had probably a lot more to say about it. But either way, that's on the channel right now. Uh, Brian, just like I said last week, I have not seen it yet, but you have. What did you think of Equalizer 3? Uh, Equalizer 3 was all right. Um, like, like I said in my review online, it, I, when it's on, it's on. But the problem is the action scenes are kind of very brief and very sparse. And uh, Dakota Fanning was total stunt casting, and she's just, eh. I just... I, has she really been in anything like good since like she was a kid? And no, I'm not counting no. uh, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. No, she pops up in a lot of things like, you know, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood or uh, The Runaways. I know she was in um, and a few other things, but she hasn't really taken off as like a major star or anything. Uh, I also I'm not going to shoot reviews for it, but I also saw Strays and Cobweb finally. Um, Strays, I enjoyed for what it was. I thought I had a fun time with it. I think most people, if you're looking for a raunchy dog comedy i think you guys are, are going to be fine with it brian thought it was uh one note through most of it uh but you were okay with it just didn't love it or really like it all that much um and then cobweb brian actually really really enjoyed i i guess expected more out of it than what i wanted it's fine but i feel like they could have done a lot more with it overall that's on streaming like everywhere strays is also now on digital everywhere uh, I, will I will say, say you, know what, you know what I want to use my time for to make it to plug. Uh, it's been out for like a month or two, uh, but I want to plug uh, Nimona on Netflix. It's an animated film, which honestly, if Spider-Verse hadn't come out this year, I would say it's the best animated film of the year. I love that movie. Everybody check it out. You said Nimona? Nimona. So the voices of Riz Nimona? Ahmed and uh, Chloe Grace Moretz. Um, yeah, it was, it was originally being produced by, I don't know which animation company. It was, but they put it in a turnaround. They decided to do it. Netflix picked it up, finished it, put it out, and and it's great. I love this movie. And I will I will use this to chalk up a movie that I already reviewed because if there wasn't for the Spider Verse, this would be nine, my number one animated film of the year. Uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles: Mutant Mayhem is now on digital. If you did not go check this out in theaters, you need to check this out at some point because it is a fucking great film. It's my favorite Turtles movie they've ever come out with. It's now on digital for people to watch at home. Watch this damn movie. 
because if, if Across the Spider-Verse does not come out, that is my number one animated film of the year. It's definitely a top five film of the year for me so far. Uh, we are also now in September. If you haven't watched the fall preview, uh, not a whole lot of great things coming up this this uh, this week or this month. I mean, th this week we've got Big Fat Great Wedding 3, don't give a shit about. We've got The uh, the Nun 2. I didn't even see the, the first movie. Um, next week, you got a Haunting in Venice. The reviews better be stellar for that or I'm not going to check it out. But Cassandro is coming out, which I'm excited for. Uh, there's also some other movies like Dumb Money, uh, Love at First Sight, A Million Miles Away, Outlaw Johnny Black. Um, but those are all probably going to be very rarely in most theaters. They're probably going to have to wait for those to go out to digital yeah, streaming. September's and all pretty that kind bare. Of stuff. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty bare. It, 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 September is the month of waiting for, for a lot of streaming movies to come out, but not so much, hey, I need to go to the movie theater. I don't think we have one until probably, what, Creator comes to theaters, which is... Or, or the Expendables like Four. Yeah, those are probably the first movies that really are going to come out, uh, which is near the end of the month that are really worth like, hey, I need to go to a theater to see this. Um, but and like I said, at the end of the month, I will drop last year's Halloween special again for everyone, so you guys can see what movies that we talked about uh, besides these two films to check out during this Halloween season. Uh, and then we will be back next week for another episode of Week Through Crusaders. Uh, Brian's film is a is it a drama? Or is it a dramedy? It's a kind of a drama mystery kind of thing. Yeah. I have never seen it. I've always wanted to see it. Uh, so I finally get to watch that for the very first time. And mine is a Amazon Prime comedy that I went in with little to zero expectations because I am not crazy about the actress and was actually blown away by how much I enjoyed that film. Uh, so feel, figure out what those movies are and we'll be back next week. Uh, we are the Movie Crusaders. I'm Sean Wasker. That is Brian Michaels. And until next time, in case we don't see you, Go watch the movies and go have some fun. You're still here. It's over. Go home. <laughs>